Beyond Synth 381. You're listening to Beyond Synth Radio. B008.5. You're tuned into the best place for awesome music and great chat. Beyond Synth is next. Hey there, welcome to the show. This is Beyond Synth. And today I'm catching up with Yota because she put out a new album a few months ago and I thought it would be fun to catch up with her, see what's been going on and uh, play some tracks from the new album, Room 412. And so we're going to do that very soon. But first, listen to this. Hello, this is God. Beyond Synth is made possible by listeners like you. Today I would like to personally acknowledge Sarah Buchelman, Tim Carlton, Rachel Buchelman, Alex Seligson, and Mr. Magoo Samurai. And Tiber 83. That's right. I, uh... <laughs> We're like nearing the end of this season, and so I was like, should I hire that voice actor again to read like two names? And I've decided not to, so I will just do an impression of him, and then I guess I will hire him again in the new year. But the point is, uh, if you enjoy Beyond Synth, please consider supporting on Patreon or on PayPal. There's a PayPal link at beyondsynth.com. It means a lot to me. So look, we're going to be putting out a bunch of shows towards the end of the season. I guess we're in the end of the season now. I have so many songs that I didn't get to in regular playlists throughout the year. So I'm going to be doing some playlist heavy episodes that are going to be mostly music and I'm going to be doing call-ins with Beyond Synth supporters and listeners and some guests and some catch-ups and maybe some surprises. So it's going to be a good time. So, you know, normally we go for a break for a few weeks in the new year to retool the show. So this time in December, there's going to be a bunch of shows so you'll have a lot of stuff to listen to while the show is on break. And uh, if you're interested in taking part, I did reach out to listeners on Discord and on Patreon. So if you didn't get that message, I will say it here. I'm hopefully going to be recording the listener and supporter conversations next week. That's the week of November the 20th to the 25th or whatever. And then the following week, the last week of November, and then maybe even into the first week of December as well. So if you're interested in taking part. I understand that if you're watching this episode on YouTube, I'm probably posting this in February, so (laughs) it's too late for you. But for the people who actually listen to the show on SoundCloud and Spotify and everywhere else, you can reach out at beyondsynth at gmail.com and let me know if you want to participate. These are going to be short little chats, so, you know, five to ten minutes, and uh, we can work out a schedule for that. Okay, so look, let's go chat with Yota. I want to listen to a song before we go chat with her so i want to listen to one of my favorite tracks from hazy paradise this has been on replay i have a synthwave vocal playlist that i have in the car and uh this song's awesome so let's listen to this track from hazy paradise and then when the song is over we'll be chatting with yota all about the new album room 412 so this is the runner by yota
Maybe I'll take a sip of water. Yeah. I made some tea, but it's still too hot. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that was the most disinterested really I've ever heard. Yeah, but it's like, okay, don't you have anything else to say? It's like, yeah, sure. Wow. <laughs> it's really? amazing, Andy. It's amazing. Thank wow. you. I'm a pretty amazing guy. Look, yeah. I'm here right now with Yota catching up. How's it going? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. The best. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's It's been a while. I don't remember if it was it's been a while now it's always like uh, there's always this nice mood when we're talking it must be a year right yeah it must have been uh, something like that it was cold i remember that because <laughs> <laughs> it was before the album came out yeah so it wasn't cold maybe the, the, it was just your presence you know that was cold. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think because i remember I, this at all i remember being at my friend's place in sweden and i thought it was cold anyway it doesn't matter it's been a while <laughs> it was before the album have you had an exciting year very much so i have to say that uh, the feedback for room 412 has been really really amazing so it's been been um, a good year but also like on a personal plan it's been a bit up and down like uh, family related things so it was a bit extreme in the sense that that uh, music wise it's been like really amazing and it continues it, this sounds like bragging it's not the way I didn't mean like that but <laughs> there are a lot of I have a lot of like interesting side projects and things like that people reaching out for collaborations people that I really would like to work with so that's really nice but then life is a bit like on a private plan like family there's been some you know sickness in the family and things like that so it's been a bit bizarre but but yeah otherwise all good <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the way it always works like for me i never trust when things are going well mm -hmm. part of my personality is like whenever things seem good mm -hmm. all i'm doing is waiting for something to go wrong yeah. so i'm always i'm never quite enthusiastic or like super happy because mm -hmm. as soon as i feel like i'm reaching a height it's just like ah something stupid's gonna happen the fucking tire is gonna shoot off the car or yeah. the cat's gonna fucking run away or something yeah you're just preparing yourself you're afraid of, of becoming disappointed that would be a good thing to change actually because i can be like that as well because then when will you be happy when will you allow yourself to be happy if you're doing that i think it's sort of a defense mechanism because i think i was disappointed a lot when i was a kid mm -hmm. and so as an adult i just sort of temper any excitement mm -hmm. <laughs> that i might have have yeah. by just reminding myself eh, don't forget though like uh, you know yeah. you don't always get what you want and the uh, shit always breaks and yeah yeah, yeah. Because I just had my birthday in November. It's like cold and it gets dark early. Mm -hmm. And I always remember as a kid, it wasn't as fun as like going to my friend's birthdays because they all had birthdays in the summertime. Yeah. Or like spring and summer or whatever. So, you know, we could yeah. go do fun things and the party could go late because like it was still warm and people could play outside. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it's time for like a fucking November birthday, it like, <laughs> you know, gets dark at like five and it's like cold outside. Yeah. Anyway. I, I'm born in January, so... <laughs> 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 There's not much happening in January either, you know, and it's cold and <laughs> so I think it's all good. I think it's okay. I mean, it's the time of the year when not much happens, so it's good that you have a birthday there. I, if you look at it like that instead. Like, mm. that's, you know. <laughs> I like your positive spin. It's good. Yeah, I am very optimistic. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was just chatting a few weeks ago to uh, all the damn vampires and we played a few mm -hmm. tracks from that collab you guys did. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the Terrifier movies? <laughs> You know, I can't watch horror movies. I really can't. I would love to watch it, but I, I really, really can't. For example, when I watched Twin Peaks, I was like, you know, traumatized for years and years after. I, I can't. It's, it's just not possible, <laughs> you know. So you just can't handle just the, the creepy stuff in general? Creepy or scary or like, yeah, exactly. I can't. Is this Bob or what is his name? Bob in the Twin Peaks. Yeah, it's Bob. Know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. So it was like years and years after when I went to the bathroom at night, I was afraid that he would look back at me in, you know, in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, but it was really on the level. Like, you know, I was afraid to go to the bathroom alone at night. Hmm. You know, that's not, I, I understand it's not normal, but this is... <laughs> 
<laughs> who said that I'm normal? But yeah, so no, I did not watch a Terrifier. Okay, yeah, no, because I know they used your track. Mm -hmm. I can't watch those movies, but the difference is, mm. like, I can handle sort of creepy, spooky kind of stuff, mm. uh, but Terrifier is one of those movies that's just really, really gory. Yeah, I heard that. Like, the deaths are really, like, over-the-top offensive, because I know, like, that's what they're, yeah. they're going for, is they're trying to push the boundaries of how much gore they can do. Yeah. So that's why I don't watch them, because <laughs> I... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read a little synopsis about the way that clown murders people and I'm like, no, I don't want to see oh, it. <laughs> it's quite funny that I have a track in a movie like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> because usually I like my vocals are quite like soft and, you mm. know, like uh, suggestive and stuff. But speaking of which, uh, actually, there is somebody that has shown interest of using two of my tracks in a movie, but it's like really not confirmed and things like that. But they're really interested in using two tracks in one in movie. And do, can you guess? what kind of genre it is. <laughs> it's the same thing as another horror film? No. Oh, it's a porn. It's not, it's, it's an erotic movie, but okay. it's like, but it's not a porn. <laughs> I don't know why I said porn. <laughs> But yeah, I, yeah. But See how like, excited I got? Yeah, you were like, oh, damn. So. <laughs> yes, it's like an erotic movie. <laughs> and this makes more sense because you well, know that's appropriate. My, my, yeah that's fine my music is kind of like suggestive and like mm. uh, you know uh, dreamy sometimes so yeah but then a horror movie that was like I didn't expect that so when Davey told me that uh, he's like hey our track has been chosen you know in this movie I was like wow you know I was, I, yeah I thought it was really it's really cool though really really cool and it's everywhere you know in the cinemas like in Sweden all over the world yeah so I'm not talking about Terrifier 2 now so. <laughs> well look <laughs> How about we, we listen to some music? So today we're doing a catch-up, but we're also going to uh, we'll focus on the new album. I say new. I mean, it's been out for a while, right? Yes, it's been out since a while. It was out on the 30th of June. Yes. So it's been out since a while, yes. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we'll listen to some tracks from this, and then we'll chat, and that's what today is all going to be about. So... I would like to listen to this song. It's called Don't Tell Me Why mm -hmm. by Yota.
And that was Don't Tell Me Why by Yota from the album Room 412. And I'm here with Yota right now, seeing what's been going on this past year. Sounds like you didn't watch any scary movies. So what do you like then if you're not watching spooky films? Porn. (laughs) (laughs) Those can get pretty spooky, man. It's a... Yeah, it's true. What I like about porn is a storyline. It's usually very, you know, on high level. I don't think that's a thing they do anymore. They don't? (laughs) I was ironic. Dude, the internet ruined everything. Because honestly, it used to be like even funny to like make jokes about porn and be like, oh, porn. And then the internet just showed just how depraved everyone is. And so now like it's not even like a funny joke because it is just really gross. (laughs) Like a lot of it's just so gross. Yeah, it is. And it's just, it's the same all the time, isn't it? But yeah, of course, I don't think the storylines were good back in the days either. But they were funny. Well, no, but at least they, they did funny them. Because yeah. it's so, such a, like, the key. Well, there is a very famous porn in Sweden, like, that is, like, super known, old, old porn movie. But the storyline and the, the actors are so bad, but they're just so off. So it becomes really funny because they're really, ba- like, literally, like, reading, mm-hmm. you know, the... Their lines. Their lines, like, it sounds like they're, like, super stiff and, like, <laughs> they're really bad actors. And it's just weird. It's just uh, the most weird porn ever. They're like running in the fields naked, all hairy and stuff. But, <laughs> but, but it's quite funny. I have to say that it's funny. And it became like a cult porn movie. Anyway. What's it called? <laughs> it's called Fabu Jantan. Fabu Jantan? How do you spell yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fabu Jantan. Fabu Jantan F. A uh, ah, is a Swedish letter. It's an A with two dots. Fabo I can is send it like it to you. Gen- I can send you the link later. <laughs> link later. Fabo Yeah. It's a bizarre. Oh, okay. Yeah. The English translation is come and blow the horn. Yeah, exactly. Because the story is that whenever somebody blows the horn, all the women become super <laughs> horny or something. Oh, there's and like a... Like- well, there's yeah. nudity right on the cover here. Um, let's see. Yeah. Approximately, The Herding Lass is a 1978 Swedish pornographic fantasy comedy film. Yeah. The film has gained notoriety in Sweden, particularly the horn blowing sequence and the masturbation scene where an actress uses a sizable sausage. Yeah. The f- <laughs> it's true. It's so <laughs> sick. Yeah, it's, it's just so sick. It's just so sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so sick. But anyway, it's it's a movie that is fun. <laughs> I mean, I th- I remember once I was invited to a party and this movie was playing in the background in a big big screen on the wall. You know, like this kind of like like a home cinema thing. And the host was dressed as a doctor, mm-hmm. and then he had this movie running in the background. And I thought it was just a weird party, but it was fun. Anyway, <laughs> no, my favorite genre is not porn. <laughs> my favorite genre would be. I I like love stories or or like just an interesting story. My favorite is the one, uh, what is it called? Blah, 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 rewind. You know, the one where they go back in time and in forward in time. What is it called? Oh, mean? come on. <laughs> blah, 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 rewind. Yeah. With Jim Carrey in his, with this girl. Oh, God, what is it called? I will remember it in a while, but it's like super nice. It's like super interesting story. Oh, um, oh, 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 oh. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Exactly. Why did I say rewind? Exactly. I love that movie. <laughs> I like blah, 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 rewind. That's <laughs> <laughs> You got the syllables. That's the important part. I I love that movie. I think it's very, very nice. And it's deep and it's interesting. And then I love also like intellectual, like French movies. Now I sound like a movie snob. I'm not. But I really do like the Red movies called The Red Movie by Kieslowski, for example. This is an old French movie. But it's very like intellectual where the characters are interesting, where it's kind of like deep. (laughs) So, yes, uh, that's my kind of like favorite kind of movie. So when the movies are over, you sit around with a bunch of people wearing black turtles turtlenecks and you discuss the film and its uh, themes <laughs> i wish <laughs> <laughs> not but i remember my ex he was a real intellectual and he took me to the movies and 
Honestly, we were watching a movie from the 50s or 60s and it was all in black and white and it was three hours long and it was about Jesus or something, I don't remember. <laughs> but like, and it was three hours of watching a black and white movie and it was a Russian movie mm. and there's like nothing happened. It was quite artistic, but there was like nothing happening. But I sat there for three hours because I, went, I was in love with him. <laughs> so... <laughs> Did you fall asleep during Vodka Jesus? Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> My wife falls asleep like <laughs> like we barely watch movies together anymore. Like when we were courting, mm -hmm. she just fell asleep during everything. Really? Like that was just her time to fall asleep was like the second a movie was on. <laughs> okay. That's the thing because for me, I like paying attention to movies and watching them. So then I would end up watching all these garbage films yeah. and then I pay attention. Then whenever we watch one of my movies, she falls asleep and I'm like, wait a second here. Like I'm paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. to all these stupid movies. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to make fun of any time there's like pretentious stuff going on. When you tell me about mm -hmm. people who want to take you to like uh, old yeah. artsy black and white films, like yeah. nothing makes me sort of laugh more than the idea of making them sit down to some like just hokey science fiction film or something yeah. or like superhero yeah. movie. Like, oh yes, this, <laughs> this film, you know, uh, Water Petals on a Summer's Eve, this 1930s Japanese film is pretty good. Uh, I'd like you to watch uh, Spider Man 3. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Today yeah, yeah. we're going to watch Mortal Kombat, you know, like just. <laughs> yeah, it's a good to, to shift for them. No, no, I remember, it, I mean, it was really interesting to be together with an intellectual. It had good size. We usually, like, every Saturday we used to bike to like, the same cafe in Stockholm and then we would sit there and he would talk. Okay, come on, there was some black turtlenecks involved, right? Uh, There's no way in hell you guys aren't meeting up to the cafe after riding. Riding your bike. His friends, his friends, his friends maybe were wearing turtleneck, not him, uh, hmm. but uh, <laughs> but it, he could have a baby. But he was, uh, <laughs> he had like a master's in philosophy and religion and blah, blah, blah. But it was really cool because we were sitting at this cafe and then we would sit there for a few hours and then he would talk to me about different religions and philosophy. And it was like, it was, uh, that is a memorable moment. But then, yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there were <laughs> other things that were less good. Yeah. But, but but anyway, I... <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen, yeah. I want to listen to some more music. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy, okay? The philosophy of Andy here at Beyond Synth is we like to listen to cool music. Mm -hmm. So I want to listen to another track. I'm trying to think which one we should pick. How about Dark Dandy? That's a good one. Yeah, it's a sexy one. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this one that's going in the movie? Totally, all the time. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Dark Dandy by Yota.
that was Yota with the track Dark Dandy from Room 412. And uh, we're just sitting here talking about intellectuals and Swedish porns. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> Let's fucking talk yeah. about it. What? We have to address this issue, okay? The elephant in the room. Oh, <laughs> what is he going to ask me now? Okay, tell me. Every time on Instagram you post one of these panel images where it's like nine pictures <laughs> that forms a big image, Yeah. I open up my Instagram and I get mm-hmm. one cube that is just yeah. your cleavage yeah. or your crotch. Yeah. Those are the two that pop up into my feet. <laughs> it's weird, right? Yeah, I know. And it it became like a thing because then it's so funny because how people react. It's obviously not me choosing. It's it's the, uh, how do you say it? Instagram le choosing. algorithm. Le, le, le algorithm. Voilà. Comment dire? Le algorithm. 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 Je pense. Je pense que c'est comme ça. But anyway, it's the Instagram algorithm. It's not me choosing. Like, oh, you know what? Let's highlight my crotch. Or like, let's highlight my cleavage. But uh, the thing <laughs> is that the reactions have been like... Uh, and sometimes I didn't understand that the people were commenting on the... Actually, that it was an image of a crotch. They're like, whoa, this is great. Or they say, whoa, this could be the next cover. And I was actually thinking that they were commenting on the entire image, like the big, like, you know, but they were actually. <laughs> so then my friend sent me a message the other day. She's like, just so you know, like they're commenting on the crotch image because that's what appears in their feed. Because I was like, oh, that's really nice, you know. But um, and somebody was like really upset. They're like, oh, there's no way that this happened that they meant like that it was intentional like mm. i had something to do with that and i was like what so yeah it's uh, i don't know why I don't know why he chooses this. I'm trying to figure it out myself because obviously there is the, if a lot of people click on a particular image, mm-hmm. then it might go, this image is more popular, so we will show it to other people. Mm-hmm. But then there's also part of me that thinks, no, it knows which one the boobs are and it's purposefully showing it. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. Like I know there's other people who will purposefully click on other ones mm. to just like go like, okay, I'm going to click on, I'm going to heart the shoulder yeah. square, you know, or the boots, mm-hmm. you know, just. To, to throw the algorithm off and it doesn't work and like when I open up my Instagram that literally is just the only thing that pops up it's just it's just like there's some boobs so every time you post one of these now it always makes me laugh because I just I just get a, just a square of boobs I'm like there there we go <laughs> there we go <laughs> Yota's oh, out promoting god. something <laughs> yeah oh god that is so that is so funny but you know what I should try by having an Im- image where the boobs are like in the right upper corner like in a small corner let's see if Instagram chooses that little high to highlight that one still that square like let's say that you have like six images and they, and in one in like the right corner there's the boobs all like in the, up there and and uh, let's well you know what would be interesting what? do the whole panel mm-hmm. but then where the boobs would be yeah put a different image or like have like the hand so it like covers with the cleavage and then trick it because I wonder if the algorithm goes well the boobs are in the center so that's the one we're going to promote uh, yeah. but then if you actually cover the boobs I wonder if it would still show that center one or if then yeah. it will show the face I bet you mm-hmm. I'll actually put money on this mm-hmm. you do a nine panel picture but instead of the boobs where the boobs would be you put mm-hmm. just something else in that square mm-hmm. then it will promote your face uh, I bet you I bet you anything yeah 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 it's probably like that I, I think so too that's the hierarchy of what we promote on social media it goes boobs yeah <laughs> crotch yeah yeah because I've been I've been sometimes I want I was wondering I was like because you know that's not how it appears in my you know when I look at it of course I see the entire like all the images mm-hmm. like the entire picture but the thing is that I, sometimes like I'm like oh so my crotch got like 100 likes but my face only got like 30 likes or something and i was like is it so much more interesting with a crotch than with a face but <laughs> but in fact it is that this is the first image people see and then they just click like on it i, I assume now I'm i sure. also think yeah. you know the rest of society could do their part to not be a bunch of fucking heathens and don't heart the crotch picture <laughs> like you know if i go come up with my feed and i just see a fucking crotch yeah. it's not like oh like uh, you know like <laughs> it's not 
my immediate reaction. Yeah. I mean, some people, I think they just click when they see the, like the first image, but some people, yeah, I do, I do receive quite a lot of like weird messages. Sure. Uh, sometimes they're quite funny, <laughs> but uh, I was just thinking about some people that like, like the crotch images, like, wow, there's mo much more interesting than the face image. Uh, but yeah, sometimes I do. I did receive some weird, uh, since Hazy Paradise, and now after each album, I do have more fans than, than back then, you know, it started with Hazy Paradise, mostly like the big, big difference was Hazy Paradise. And then it has been just going up because I can check the, you know, the Spotify statistics. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the more fans you get, the more, it's mostly just beautiful messages, which I really, really appreciate. I'm so happy for that. But then you get these weird, weird messages as well. And you're like, oh my God, okay. So sometimes you just need to report them. Yes. No, the, yeah. <laughs> the internet's a funny place. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's different for me. It's the weird ones I get are mostly just, I think people with uh, like mental issues. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So I don't I don't get any weird perverted stuff. Yeah. I don't know if I can say but but uh Well, don't don't, don't give them any airtime. Yeah. Okay, I won't say anything. Okay, let's go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just the nature of fucking Yeah. being public on the computer, right? You're going to Yeah. There's a lot of people that I don't think this is probably my most uh, politically incorrect take. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I I think that there's some people who shouldn't have social media accounts on account of their own mental health. Yeah. Yeah, you know I what I mean? But so. of course, there's no way you could enforce that <laughs> in, yeah. in a yeah. democratic society. But like, you know, there's some people who I think it hurts. Like yeah. they already have a mental illness and social media only makes it worse for them. Yeah, that's totally true. And it, in Sweden, there's this place where you can adopt dogs, you know, like yeah. uh, and, and when you apply, you need to apply and then you go to an interview. It's like they're super selective, you know, you need to like show that you're good. You would be. Uh, you know, do good uh, dog owner and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like actually like uh, almost difficult to, to you know not everybody gets to to adopt a dog. Then which is just good. Yeah. But then I was just it made me think of the fact that anybody can have children, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, anybody can have children, but <laughs> I, it's just I just thought about it. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing because I also heard that in Sweden. There's this magical horn that, like, if you blow it, like, it just makes the women horny or something. Like, yeah, is that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Is that true? <laughs> uh, it's totally true. <laughs> 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 so nobody's blowing the horn here now no. because I need to focus on this interview. Exactly, exactly. We, we, uh... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let's listen to another track here. What should we do? Okay. It's between holding on and I, I'm not going to pronounce that right. What twenty three? Rue de Bernard <laughs> Bernardin. Vingt uh, trois Rue de Bernardin. It, it is complicated. Bernard. Yeah. Well, let's let's do holding on then because that's easier for me to say. <laughs> okay, let's go with holding on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's listen to this and we'll be right back. This is uh, this is Holding On by Yota.
that was Yota with the track Holding On from the album Room 412. And we're catching up, we're talking about Instagram algorithms and cleavage, I guess. This is a very exciting and conversation. Cleavage. Yeah. What is, uh, what's this album about? This album is about a very, very uh, strong love story very intense love story. Room 412 is about everything that happens in a relationship, but with a complicated twist. It's all about love and passion and uh, sadness as well. It's kind of like this kind of impossible love. There's also like you're losing this person, but then you kind of like, then there's this idea of, can you get them back? Could love be strong enough to bring somebody else back? from what I call the gates than in the outro. Basically, it's a very passionate uh, album. It's all, uh, very much about passion. It's very much about desire and it's very much about sadness. So there's like, I would say that it's very much all the kind of emotions maximized. It has a, a lot of energy in the way I think there is quite a lot of up-tempo tracks in it and especially the vocals are kind of like it's a totally different mood from like Hazy Paradise for example. But I, I'm thinking that I will go back to uh, a little bit softer, I mean not only but a little bit softer vocal for the next album. We'll see. Who were all the producers on this one? Was there different ones from the last album? or mm -hmm. Some of them are the same, but we have on this album the ones that usually always are there. So there's Lifelike, of course, and then there's Stefan. Stefan, who's like Mr. Limelight. I call him Mr. Limelight. He did a Runaway Limelight, etc. Then there's Doos, which is like, you know, Moon Boy and, and, and many other tracks. And then there is Brandon from Night Drive, and he was also on, on Lucy dreams and then there's Sergei Ledovsky which who I never worked with before there are two two guys from the states and the rest are from France then there's Olivier Visconti the French guy that I worked with once before I think and Tommy 86 or like I said Tommy 86 Voila. It's like, and his mom didn't like it when I said Tommy 86 instead of Tommy 86. <laughs> she, she, she's a lovely woman, but she's like, I prefer when you call him Tommy 86. Wait, wait anyway. his mom? Yeah, I know his mom. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, you know, actually, uh, Frederic, his real name is Frederic, and mm. he's a Parisian guy. So we hang out sometimes, and I also got to know his mom, and his mom is like this amazing, really nice woman. So we usually kind of like eat all together together have dinners with uh, the producers if whoever is available and the ones that live in the Paris area and then usually his mother is, joins us as well it's true <laughs> I love it yeah but I remember I posted a video on Instagram and I said Tommy 86 <laughs> and I thought it was funny but she didn't think that it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so there's Tommy Edisax on it as well. And then, yeah, so the mostly French. But then there's, like I said, Brandon and Sergey. They're in the States. Brandon is in Houston and Sergey is in, um, I think it's San Francisco. Well, it's cool you remember all this. I can't even remember these sorts of details of like my close friends. Or unless you are, you looking at a list or a chart right now? <laughs> it's like... um, no, I'm not. Actually, I know most of the producers that I'm working with were friends or became friends, except for I don't know Sergey uh, at all. I mean, we talked obviously when we worked on the track, but I don't know him personally, but I know the rest, all of them. And Stefan, Mr. Limelight and, and Doos are like two of my very good friends in Paris, you know? So we're all friends. Voila. <laughs> That's why. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> the, but the producers. Yeah, so there are very many, many different producers. Every time I send out the royalty reports that I receive from my manager, that my manager receives from the label, I send them out to 13 or 14 people. That's the total amount of producers that I had on my album since the start. So we, we there are a lot of people. Well, that must be fun. You feel like you're a musician and an accountant? Yeah, I am, totally. And I'm like, I had to run after them for invoices. I'm like, hey, you didn't, you know, and I'm running after them so that I can pay them. It's like, the, you know, it mm. doesn't usually doesn't happen, right? That people do that, no, but. I'm joking, but I'm like, hey, can you send me an invoice? And I say, I cannot hold tabs. You know, I can't hold tabs. But, you know, I can't do that. So I'm like running after them. So so I am the accountant. <laughs> but when it comes to production, uh, what happened in room 412 is that I stepped in quite a lot in arranging that um, some people could mix different tracks so, so that the overall sound would be 
more or less the same mm -hmm. and that we would be happy with the overall sound because there were so many different people that used so many different programs and so it, the tracks were sounding different from each other which was a challenge so I stepped in quite a lot I mean I didn't produce it but I stepped in and I was like okay maybe this person could produce this one or maybe we can change this and that and like we were bouncing so many times back and forth like all the tracks so I listened to it obviously but then there is uh, Laurent Lifelike that listens to all of the tracks and then Stefan usually those are the guys that I ask and sometimes those as well so there are like many ears <laughs> that listen to it but I had to step in and there was a lot of work on the side you know like that yeah voila <laughs> <laughs> It was a bit of an exhausting experience, darling, but uh, yeah, we made it. Well, that's so awesome. It was yeah. that's, uh, that's what I like to hear. I like to hear a nice story of getting the work done and, and, and producing yeah. an album. It's nice. Mm hmm. <laughs> I think we're both tired today. You're like, uh, yeah. It's like it's like we would would have, would have been smoking something. We're like, uh, what's the name of that movie? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, who am I? I don't know. But but I know this good you know porn movie from in from Sweden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know from it's the seventies. The one it's piece like, of information oh, really? I, I still have in my head. Yeah, it's been like two potheads having an interview. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, hey man, uh, the. <laughs> You are right. I don't have a retort here. I am very sleepy. <laughs> hey, well, look, cause it's dark. You know, it's dark and it's weird. It's dreary. You know, it's been like raining all day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's that's the way it is. How about this? Yes. How about you pick a song? What's a song that you like from this album that we haven't listened to yet? Mm, I like all of them. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. <laughs> but let me choose one. OK, let's choose Velvet. It's very sexy. Ooh, all right. Let's listen to some sexy. Yeah. This is uh, this is velvet. What I, I, I just said. Let's listen to some sexy, and then my sentence stopped. <laughs> I'm not very good at making shows. All right, let's listen to this one. This is uh, purportedly a very sexy track from the album Room Four One Two. This <laughs> is Velvet by Yota. <laughs>
And that was Yota with the track Velvet. Ooh, from Room 412. It's an album about love and death. And I'm here with Yota right now. All the way. Are you in France or Sweden right now? Where are you? I'm in Paris, yeah. Mm. I mean, you are there Paris. most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just you pop over to visit Sweden because you want to eat those meatballs and hear that horn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, let's talk more about sex. It becomes more interesting. <laughs> uh, then we will wake up. Yes, uh, I like to go to Sweden and, with this and, and talk like this and eat Swedish meatballs and run naked in the fields. No, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I live in Paris, but I visit Stockholm very often because that's my hometown and my sister lives there and like uh, a lot of my best friends live there and stuff. If I could, I would probably live like like half of the time there and half of the time here. But it's just complicated with two different flats and yeah. What's the best time to be in Sweden? If you had to pick six months, what are the six months you want to be there? Well, most of the people would say the summer because it's, you know, it's cold and dark during the winter. But I actually love the winter over there. Ooh, vampire. Yeah, vampire when it snows, but it's very beautiful. Christmas time, December is just pure magic. It's like heaven on earth for me. If it snows and then everybody has candles at home, it's very cozy. You have all these Christmas stars, decoration. It's like, it's amazing. And as it becomes dark, you know, the sun goes down like super early. It's like what, two o'clock or something at its worst. And it's like, the sun goes down, I don't know, two or three o'clock or something. Then it's dark, but if it is dark, and there is snow outside and you have like, it's like a cocooning, like you have your candles lit, you have all this amazing Christmas food. And so it's a very cozy time of the year. And the summer is really nice as well. So I, I, I would say that December, it's amazing. And then the entire summer is pretty nice. As well. It's very nice. If you're a tourist, then it's better to visit Sweden during the summer. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can leave me alone. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll be there in December and I don't want to see you. Any of these silly tourists. Oh, I love tourists. I, I never understood the thing that people are like, oh, there's so many tourists, you know. I mean, it's. I think it's nice. Well, it depends. Like, I agree. Yeah. Although I live in like a tiny town of 2,000 people in the mm -hmm. last like five years or so, the tourist season in the summer has gotten so crazy that like I can't even get a tea at like Tim Hortons because there's yeah, like lineups cool. that go out the door and into the parking lot. <laughs> so there is like a natural balance of how much tourism is sustainable, yeah. you know, like depending on the size of the city or whatever. Yeah, I understand. Standing in line is not funny. No. And yeah, I hate that. I mean, I think Paris is the world's most visited city. I think Paris is number one, I, I think so. So it's full of tourists, of course. What, what I like about tourists here, like often, not always, but often is when I can observe the tourists and I can see their enthusiasm mm -hmm. when they're in the city and they think like, you know how you look at something for the first time, it's always like the first, oh, it's only, always the first time is always amazing, isn't it? I was joking. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like something else. But <laughs> yeah, the first time somebody, you know, when you just arrive in a city and everything is like, wow, and people are like, wow, because it's like Paris, it's like a dream. And, and then you see people ordering, you know, French food and they're sitting at these uh, cafes and it's like so like, and they're like so happy. And you can also see like entire families and like the children are like, a, happy not always of course there's the scenario where people are just drained and tired because it's there's if you if you come to paris and you decide to you're like i'm gonna do all those touristic things like in a in a couple of days and a few days i'm gonna we're gonna do all of it and just forget about it you will be drained you will be in a bad mood your feet will hurt and etc etc so there's also but when you can see the tourists that are like actually enjoying themselves it makes me really happy i know it sounds maybe a bit weird but the, it makes me really happy to see that. Yeah, because you're bored. You know, you walk outside and you're like, ah, the Arc de Triomphe. Fuck, I see this every day. Fucking the Louvre. <laughs> I get it. Boring. Yes, yeah, because I'm so lonely, you know, so I don't have any friends. So I'm joking. <laughs> there was somebody uh, commenting on, on Facebook the other day that I seemed so lonely, but it was like I was filming myself when I was in the in the bathroom. I mean, in the bathroom, just, you know, washing my hands. And then he said, you seem to be very lonely. And I said, 
in the bathroom. Preferably, yes, I would like to be alone in the bathroom. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that uh, I do uh, love to observe the people like that and, that, you know, see how they did their joy, basically. That's really lovely. But of course, with that said, it's different from where you live when like maybe you you want to have your coffee and then you you need to stand in line there i mean here in paris you can go just go somewhere else you can look at you have thousands and thousands of places to buy coffee at you know and you can choose an area that is not so touristic yes the area where i live is not touristic at all but if you go to the you know some other areas it's just sometimes of course too much because i i hate to stand in line i can't do that well i won't so that's the frustrating thing is like so i'll walk down yeah i'll see the line up and then i'm like well fuck this and then i just turn around and i <laughs> just go away yeah yeah you know that i never went up in the eiffel tower mm -hmm. i never i mean i live pretty close to the eiffel tower i can see it now when i talk to you i can see it from my window but i never went up in the eiffel tower because there's always queues yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I just can't stand the queues well when i was in yeah when i was in toronto yeah I've only ever been in the CN Tower once. Really? Yeah. Oh, like one time my whole life. And it was only because my... Because somebody forced you? you no, know, uh, one of my teachers in college invited me to lunch and she took me to the... What? There's like a restaurant. She invited you for lunch? You were her student? Like it just, it was... It's a, is this is this a storyline for a porn or not? No, <laughs> it's, it is possibly inappropriate. <laughs> But it's not a. It's not a. Anyway, the point is, with there's like a restaurant in like the top of the CN Tower, like it sort of spins, like because mm -hmm. it's it's it it rotates. It's like it's called the. I think it's just called the rotating restaurant. I don't know if it has like a name. Uh huh. So I have been okay. there once. Yeah. I'm not good with heights. Oh, you are you afraid of? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Ooh. I'm bad with heights. There's a funny video. I don't know if it's on my Instagram uh -huh. where I went to one of those things, you know, where they harness you and you just jump, but you just fall like yeah. two stories. Like it's not super high, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. high enough that like you know it's mm -hmm. a little scary, even though you're tied to like cables and stuff yeah and i put the whole video up there and it's just me just too scared to do the jump and so it just keeps going and i, I think i was up there for like 20 minutes oh. i wouldn't jump and then people at the bottom started like cheering oh. to make me jump and then someone told them my name in the crowd yeah and so they're like andy but it's like kids like they're making oh. fun of me because like, like I couldn't yeah, do it yeah, I was but you didn't do it i did, did i did do, do it, it. Oh. but it's not like those ones where people jump off a fucking cliff or whatever like it's yeah it's maybe like two stories it's like jumping off like a really high third story roof or something you yeah. know what i mean like not a not a huge fall but still yeah. Enough if you're afraid of heights. But one thing that I never understood is, but it's great that you did it, but one thing that I never understood is like, why, if you are afraid of that, why, why do you do that? Why would you like do that? Okay, I wasn't, I, to be honest with you, yeah. I didn't know I was going to react that way. Because mm -hmm. I saw like my wife did it and I think we were there with somebody else and they did it and they did it so easily. And when they were done, they're just like, oh yeah, it's fun, you'll like it. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I climbed up there and the second the harness was on, they're like, okay, jump. I'm just like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like no, I just, yeah. I could, couldn't, yeah. I, but I didn't know yeah. if I'd known, I wouldn't have gone up there. Cause I would have, I, I would have prevented embarrassment, you know, <laughs> just like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> but uh, it was, oh, you did it. That's good. I was with uh, Laurent Lifelike, you know, with, with the, on a Australia, he was touring in Australia and we stayed at a hotel. I think it was the it was like the hotel breakfast was on the 60th floor or something, you know, so it was like extremely high. I don't know. I remember this is super high. And there is this floor that was like out of glass. So you could actually see it was the, the restaurant and the way you, you know, you could see down to you know the ground it just was like you were up in the air and it was just class and i'm not afraid of heights but i, I honestly it felt so weird yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know it's the no brain good. it's like it feels like you're walking on on air or like it's so strange it's such a weird feeling yes so even i because usually i'm not uh, laurent is uh, he has this uh, how do you say fear of heights so he couldn't eat there <laughs> that is how you say it yeah he couldn't eat there he said and i said oh come on but honestly to be honest i thought that it was pretty scary <laughs> well now <laughs> when i have him on the show he's gonna have to defend yeah. himself here i thought about that ask ask him ask him that if he has a fear of heights ask him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> well, hey, look, how about we listen to another song? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Marco played this one a few weeks ago. Uh, you made a cover song on here. Uh-huh. Yes, I did. It's your cover of Hey Little Girl. That's it. Yes, by Ice House. Yeah, so let's listen to that, and then we'll keep talking. This is uh, Hey Little Girl, a cover of the Ice House song by Yota. Yeah. And that was Yota with the track Hey Little Girl, which is a cover mm-hmm. by Ice House. 
Are they Australian? I think they are. Hold on, let me look I it up. Think- yeah, I got to make sure I close so. this tab from this fucking Swedish porn film. <laughs> My family walks in like, what are you looking at, Dad? Oh, nothing. Uh, <laughs> um, I think they're Australian. Yes. Uh, yes. Formed in Sydney in 1977 as Flowers, wow. initially known in their homeland for their pub rock style. Uh-huh. So what made you do this song? It was uh, Laurent's idea, actually, because Laurent made the instrumental on the album. So he said, you should do it you should do this one and i was like oh yeah okay yes that's a, that's a good idea because it is a, a cool track and he has also he has a an idea of for the upcoming album a cover but i can't remember of course yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's more fun than saying you can't say see a lot of times you know when people come on here and they've got projects and yeah 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 i know i know oh i can't say yeah, it's a secret yeah. so it's more interesting if yeah, you just yeah, forgot I, I can't remember i'm <laughs> sorry but uh, he had a good, really good idea like he said you should do this one i was like he gave me like two different ideas uh, yeah and i was like oh that's both of them were good so i might do another cover on the next one also like an cl- old classic mm. that I do remember <laughs> darling what else do you want to know tell me darling <laughs> well listen what uh, yeah. now I want to find some uh, pretentious fucking art house film to talk about mm. what do you think is considered the most pretentious film if I type that in most pretentious film mm. in history wow the 40 well we got ranker.com says the 40 most pretentious movies ever made could it be something with woody allen maybe i love woody allen movies by the way tree I of life woody. mother you're not supposed to say that anymore woody allen married his oh, adoptive uh, yeah, daughter yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right yeah you're right but i mean the movies no i know so look i'm not uh again there's <laughs> yeah. a lot of um problematic uh characters whose work I still enjoy. Yeah, it, I just don't say it out loud. <laughs> so like, now that, exactly, now that if you ask me, because you ask me what kind of movies I like, I like movies where the characters are like a bit complicated or interesting, that there's a depth there's an interesting conversation, the dynamic yeah, yeah, yeah. between two, two people, like in, a, in this Swedish porn movie. It's just amazing. <laughs> See, I like films where uh, like guys have these kind of armored suits with capes and they punch each other through walls and shoot lasers out of their eyes. Oh, that sounds too complicated. And there's robots and time travel. <laughs> I like time traveling robots. I like uh, what else do I like? <laughs> Guys shooting people. I don't know. With <laughs> oh wow, I that is something I'm totally uninterested in. Like when the, these movies where they just shoot people, mm. and then they, there's usually the sound is so loud, mm. you know. And the uh, movies is like bam, bam, bam. No, I hate that. It's so boring. There's nothing more. Boring Listen to than you. That. You sound just like Tommy eighty six's mother. <laughs> Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and she's a lovely lady. No, she's a great lady. No, but honestly, yeah, I, I, I understand that I sound like, oh, I don't like, but it's just, you know what? <laughs> it's just boring. No, I understand. It is boring. Yeah, like the best ones in history, you know, like action films, there still needs to be a cool story. Yeah. Because even even though I love action movies, mm-hmm. there's a whole bunch I've watched where they're, yeah, they are boring because there's nothing mm-hmm. tying together mm-hmm. the stuff. Blade Runner is cool. Most of my favorite films are kind of Hollywood movies but there's only really like one good one a year Mm -hmm. and then i go man when i was young the movies were so much better Mm -hmm. but really it's because when i was young i got to watch every single movie that was ever made in a short amount of time because you know i'm like you know i'm 16 and i'm getting into watching movies now i have everything from 1995 earlier to watch and so i get to pick all of the best ones from there to be my favorite movies exactly Exactly. And then now you yeah. just have to, you know, movies come out and they're disappointing. And Yeah. No, 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 you're right. You're right. It's rare that I watch movies these days. Like if I have some free time, I usually choose to do other things and watch movies. But like some people are like, oh, don't you ever watch movies? It's rare. I should do it more often. I, I don't anymore. Like I don't. I guess when I was younger, there was just less distractions. So it was so much easier mm-hmm. to just watch, like watch movies as a hobby. Mm-hmm. So now mm-hmm. all I do is I complain about how much everything sucks. But then when I really think about it, I'm not really, really paying attention. Mm-hmm. A movie is almost too much of a commitment now because they're so long and all the movies I like, mm-hmm. like the superhero ones and all that shit, they're all like three hours long now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about, they got to start making movies shorter again. Yeah. One hour and 20 minutes, man. That's a perfect amount of time. It's enough. Anything longer than that, you have to have a very special film. Yeah. 
No, I agree with you. This is like I said, when my, my ex took me to this super intellectual movie, like I said, from the 60s, <laughs> and this is like about Christ or something. Like It was very arty. It was like super beautiful, but like you couldn't understand anything of the storyline. It was like three hours. The courting phase is always a fun phase in a relationship because I made my wife watch Doctor Who. Uh-huh. That's my favorite TV show and I'm and classic Doctor Who, which is like completely unwatchable to people who, uh-huh. who don't know... Yeah. Uh, you know so you know that's a fun time yeah. <laughs> where you can where you can make a lady pretend to be interested in the stuff you like yeah and then as the relationship goes on then we stop then pretending you find out that they don't like they didn't like it at all yeah <laughs> but the thing is that this ex actually through him i got to know all these intellectual people and of course because he hang, was hanging out with these what did you call it? Color? Turtlenecks. Turtlenecks. They're all wearing turtlenecks and berets. Some of them, yeah, maybe. <laughs> anyway, uh, really nice people. And two of them are like really good friends uh, still today. And uh, one of them, he was in Paris and he stayed at my place. And as a thanks for stay, letting him stay at my place, he took me to the opera. But it was the contemporary opera here in Paris. Mm. And it was like the most bizarre freaking opera ever. And it was uh, three hours, it's like super long i don't know how long it was and it was this kind of like it not a classical opera not at all like a super contemporary and he said yeah this is even difficult for somebody who's used to go to the opera actually because the rhythm it was like super bizarre everything was just so bizarre Trust me, Andy. Yeah, so, no, I, <laughs> I trust you. Because, but he, because he's my friend, mm-hmm. I said his name is Richard. I said Richard, <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna. Maybe we can meet. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go to a cafe. Maybe you could just join me afterwards. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, sure. It wasn't a problem. But I, I, I was there for one and a half hours, and I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> it was just horrible. Have you ever watched like? Okay, the epitome of what you're talking about, it's this modern interpretive dance performance. I think it's on YouTube. It's called Body Remix. And there's like another title. It's like Body Variations or something. And it's like men and women wrapped in bandages. And they have these little like stickers covering their nipples. And they move on stage with microphones in their mouths, making oh. weird noises and like flailing around with crutches and like metal bars and stuff. Uh-huh. It's very weird and sexual, but also like really funny because of how, how weird and like pretentious it is. And I'm sure there's like this intellectual audience like watching this going like, oh, Ooh, look at how the look at how the movement conveys this this." meaning yeah. and meanwhile there's just like a guy on stage like whacking a metal rod into a ladder like it's his dink like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because it's like, yeah, they're really like serious and they're like discussing this and it's actually it just sucks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it gives them an intellectual orgasm. <laughs> it's so bizarre. You have to send it to me. But yeah, it makes me think of, uh, I've been to some theaters as well and watched some plays and it was like, yeah, you know, all, also like this kind of contemporary stuff. Yeah, it was just so bad. <laughs> there is something funny about it, like the idea that people just take it so seriously seriously yeah there is and it's the same with art people you know can stare at a, at a little dot you know mm. but this dot is like so special in this painting because it's made by i don't know whatever somebody who's was so amazingly special and, and interesting and it's just like a black dot or something and then, then there's like uh, people analyzing you know and taking a few steps back and looking at this piece of art and thinking wow <laughs> yeah no it's <laughs> It is funny to me because I feel like almost like the appreciation of that kind of art is also a performance. Of course. That's more art than art yeah. itself. <laughs> it's you know? like the pretending yeah. to like it is like you're playing your part as critic. Yeah. Well, look, mm-hmm. it's been fun to chat. We should probably wrap it up. Let's listen to one more song yes. and then we'll wind down. So this was one I really dug. It's called Somebody Else. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's listen to that, man. This is a Somebody Else by Yota.
that was Yota with the track Somebody Else from the album 412. I've been catching up with Yota today. We're having fun. I'm always a sucker for that note combination. The fucking down, narrow, narrow. I don't know what. Uh, I just, I always okay. love that combination of notes. I don't know why. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah, it's nice. It This one is a, a special one because I was done with all the recordings but then i was like we need we need this one in the story when you kind of like split up with the person and then you just tell them that to fuck off (laughs) (laughs) no but anyway i was like i need this one i like because it became like it adds to the story but the thing is that we had no time not much time and then the tracks were already like the label was about to send them for mastering so it would really be too late you know so i said to james to my manager's like no no tell tell nrw to stop the mastering we need this track on the album and then i engaged um Duz and stefan to work on one track together because they never did work on one track together for me mm. and this is what they did then and they worked so hard and they worked so fast it was amazing and we made it and i'm happy to hear that you like it that it's you said that it's one of your favorites see that's a that's an exciting story right down to the wire you know it sounds like intense mm-hmm. it's like the end of a mission impossible movie very much and and i was i felt pretty bad for the guys that I, I made them work so fast and they were like i could hear that they were a bit tired uh but i was like <laughs> we need this one come on guys sorry sorry and you you guys because it was really a dream to put them to the two of them together actually on a track which actually uh, i will do with the next one i have these different ideas of which ones of the producers could work really well together to work together i even had this idea that i would have laurent lifelike and stefan and Duz on one track together but then i said that to laurent and he's like maybe it's a bit too much like to have three people mm. like what am i gonna do the hi-hats yeah <laughs> but maybe yeah that's what he said so we will see we'll see but um yeah there will be a few of those i think on the upcoming album anyway sorry i'm talking so much okay it's your time man that's what catching up with yota is all about <laughs> to hear yota talk <laughs> yota talk it was nice because usually we always like there's like a very up-tempo thing when we talk it's always like do, 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 do. today we sound more like two people that know each other for a while i guess we are that right <laughs> well <laughs> like i mean like really like that we would have known each other like for many years and you know stuff like that well when's the first time we chatted <laughs> we okay we go way back <laughs> Um, the first time we chatted was a few years ago. It was for Hazy Paradise. It was for Hazy Paradise. I feel like it was yeah. probably 2020 season, probably. But I was thinking more like that if we would known each other, like we would just, you know, live in the same area. I'm like hang that out. though. That if I have any superpower, yeah, it's the ability to fast track friendships with people. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, if, if, if I enjoy talking to a person, then I can sort of like just mm. bypass the history yeah. and just talk to them as I would talk to anybody. You know what? I'm exactly the same way though. It is true. It is true. Because I don't like yeah. small talk and I get bored. Me neither. And so yeah, I get bored. if I meet somebody as, as soon as I can tell like, okay, this seems like a fun person. Yeah. Then I just, yeah. I'm just me instantly instead of like fast forward all the boring stuff like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so what did you do where, where have you been working before and what like all those boring questions that you have to yeah, ask yeah. and this is just fast forward i'm exactly you know what andy i'm exactly like you there so that's nice okay so that's why it feels like it, that's why we are talking <laughs> to each other like as if we would have been known known each other for like i don't know forever it might just be my dislike of small talk it's like i just i always even when i meet people for the first time i always want to move past that as Mm -hmm. quickly as possible me too and just get to like let's talk about our similar interests or whatever but then it doesn't always work because sometimes some people don't appreciate my sense of humor or whatever and so yeah and i can tell like you know if you talk to somebody and i make like some weird joke and i can Mm -hmm. instantly go okay this person is not keen on me (laughs) and so i just sort of move along it's so fun when you talk about that because i was just about to say and then you said it. Maybe you're the male version of me, and vice versa. <laughs> well, I'll have to post a picture that's like nine pictures of me, and then we'll see which one people end up liking. Yeah, do that. Which, <laughs> although I do have a very unremarkable crotch, so I feel like that one's gonna get the least amount of hearts. It'll just get a bunch of question marks, like just like, uh, dude doesn't have a dick or whatever, you know. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> the dude without the dick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. <laughs> well, yeah, that was fun. No, but the thing is that with uh, I, I, I'm behaving exactly like you, where I, I will start to joke because it's the worst thing I know is like, it's, I just become bored, just like you said. So then I will start to joke and sometimes I like to joke, but it's not always the right moment. <laughs> That's the problem. Cause some people, it's, it's interesting. Like there are some people out there who are like really serious people. Yeah. And I just can't function around people like that. They make me nervous. Me like when I'm around people like that, they feel like real adults, even though I'm a fucking 42 years old. But yeah. like there's some people who I'll be near yeah. and I just feel like, yeah. ooh, they're like a serious person. And I can't imagine what their life is like. Boring. Like that they just walk around and be stern all the time. And Boring. That's it. I guess. But I mean, the thing is, I don't know, maybe you handle it better than me. I think I could handle that better, but sometimes... I kind of let it get to me. So sometimes they, it actually makes me feel down afterwards because it makes me feel like, oh, they didn't like me. And then I feel bad. And then it's like, because I have this thing that I'm a bit like a dog that I want everybody to like me, you know, <laughs> and at some point you just need to, you know, stop being like that. You need to just drop it. I know, like, if you think about it, then it's obvious that not everybody will like you. And why would like the most boring guy in the area like you he's fucking boring he's you know he will not like you because you're not boring or <laughs> whatever but <laughs> yeah because i don't think i'm boring i'm like full of like i'm just i mean i'm, I'm not saying that i'm always fun but I, I i try my best yeah yeah. yeah. you know i don't like seriousness we all gonna die one day you know we're gonna walk around <laughs> life but it's true you know we're gonna walk around life like being all serious and stuff and what about then when you're dying and that's the serious day you know what i mean yes yeah why why waste it now yeah. have fun when you can i say that as a guy who like just naps all day and doesn't know what to do with himself. But I told you that's probably because you have maybe have a vitamin D deficiency. You have to fix that. Okay. Well, well <laughs> this is this is the exciting conversation we were having before we hit record. Yeah. Right now we're gonna let the audience in on this. That like, Sorry. <laughs> before we hit record, we talked about vitamin D and. <laughs> I was, I, you know, I have this thing. I can become quite like like a mom. I'm like, mm. yeah, I was telling you, I was like, you have to check that. Did you have it checked? You're like, no. Oh, it's like you need to do that <laughs> because <laughs> I did. I did say it like that too. <laughs> no, no, I need no vitamin important. D. It's important, yeah, darling. Yeah. It's important because I had. Okay, we're not gonna talk about it, but it can make you very <laughs> tired. Okay, that's all. Yeah, that's all I want. Well, I'm say. just tired all the time. Yeah, uh, but honestly, it's because I just don't get sleep. Me neither. Ever since I had kids, mm -hmm. I have not slept like a proper night what but they're not small are they still small? no 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 well because at first like when you have kids uh, there's this initial thing where mm -hmm. you just wake up mm -hmm. just for anything mm -hmm. like you just go if, if you if the baby makes noise you wake up yeah. if the baby doesn't make noise you wake, you up. wake up yeah, yeah. The, you know like so it's just a lot of that mm. and i never really shook it so and now we got another kitten yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and he uh the other day he was like peeing in the fucking uh plants oh so now you you, you if I hear him scuttling around in the bedroom, it's all of a sudden it's like, oh, son of a bitch, like wake Is he up. Castrated? He's like, Fuck. Not yet. He's a, he's still young. Yeah, okay. He's like three months old. Like he's still a kitten. It's so much fun. He's hilarious. He, he was like, a, so he, I saw the image. You, didn't you send me an image of him? He's so beautiful. Yeah. It's um, He's amazing. He's such a character. Like you can see it. I mean, I, I was just um, based upon the picture. Wow, what a personality, a beautiful. But I don't understand why he's peeing already. I don't like that. You should talk to him. Well, I think, um, I don't know, maybe he might have like a, an infection. Like it's funny, those, those cats, like mm. I love flat-faced cats. Like they're so funny to look at. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They do come with some issues. Oh, I didn't know that. And he sneezes, and I think they're, they're more prone to certain mm -hmm. things. Like they get colds and stuff because they sneeze a lot. Mm -hmm. But they're fun. I mean, like the kittens, at first, Chester, Chester didn't like him and got really upset, but now they're playing with each other. Oh. And Chester's still, he's big now, so he doesn't know 
totally how to play appropriately with the kitten, so he does kind of punch him pretty hard. Oh. But, uh, What's <laughs> but the it name is of funny. the kitten? So the kitten is called Johnny Gizmo. Johnny Gizmo. And he looks like a gizmo. Like, you see his face. Like, it's just, it's so funny. Oh, adorable. Adorable. And Chester. And he's, he's the same breed as Chester, like an orange Persian cat, except his face is more extreme. Yeah, it was really has a special face. Yeah, because yeah. his eyes are, like, next to his nose. Like, they just, he's so funny to look yeah, at. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, amazing. I don't know. People have understood that I really like love cats. So a lot of people send me pictures of their cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and and I love it because it's really, no, I have a very, I just love, I love dogs and cats. And your cat has such a, I mean, he looks so amazing. What a character. Well, they're, they are fun to look at. Like I will say, yeah. I've still, you know, we've had Chester for like over a year and I'm still not bored of looking at him. Like he just, whenever he walks, Walks in, it's just yeah. I just look at him. And I his like name is like really nice. He has this British upper class name, isn't this? Yeah, yeah. Chester, it's like <laughs> Sir, <laughs> you know. But it's like my cat. He's, he also has it. He has a, his name is Watson. Mm-hmm. That's also very British, isn't it? Like Watson, he could sit in, a, in the corner with a cigar and a glass of you know whiskey or something. You should take a picture too. <laughs> take a picture of you. Uh-huh. Do the nine panel thing. Uh-huh. Have Watson in the panel, but not in the panel with the boobs or the cross. But where then? Just maybe to the side, like like uh-huh. a side panel. Uh huh. And then see what the algorithm chooses. If it's got a choice between face, mm-hmm. boobs, crotch, or cat, that'll be an interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I can do that. I don't know what my fans will think, but if I start to do that on. Don't what? ever think of your fans. Do what I do. Okay. Actively never think of what people want. Deliver things that nobody wants or needs, so they get upset with you. <laughs> okay. I'll That's do the. That. Thank That's you the for the handy way. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> no, you have you have a good point. I don't always think about that. I'm just thinking that if I post something and it's like you know if I yeah, but uh, yeah, I can try. And that's why you can be successful because you actually consider your career and think about it. <laughs> actually, I think about what I do, but I don't think about like for example in interviews and stuff like that. I'm very not. I can say whatever. I mean, I haven't been extreme. But I've still been t- talking about Swedish porn. Like, I don't know how many times I mentioned it in this. And I'm referring to, I'm talking about the porn movie, which is kind of like really bizarre one. I don't care. I mean, I could be much more <laughs> formal, but, but it's so boring, right? So why would I? So I don't think I care too much. I, I really don't. Well, the bottom line is this, all right? Mm. You make lovely music. It's a good album. People should pick it up from New Retro Wave, Mm -hmm. Room 412. And it's it's lovely to catch up. We'll catch up again when you put something else up. It was really nice to catch up, really. And uh, yes, I I think I will have something new next year, obviously. Not this year. (laughs) Otherwise, I would have to finish in one year. Yeah, but yeah, next year. For sure. Well, you got what you got like a, a month and a half or whatever. Like you can uh, you can do it. Mm, I um yeah I would be I don't know how the results would be. I, I have I'm, I'm working on so many several side projects, very different genres. So this is what I'm doing this year. I mean I will start with the album, but anyway. I'm talking so much suddenly. Like I have to stop. Sorry yeah, for that. Yeah, and we're and we're here. To, we gotta go. We gotta go. Look at this. So you, you got all yeah. excited when the when, yeah. <laughs> when I'm gonna wind things down. Yeah. Okay. Th- thanks for having me. Thanks yes, for having you have, me. And you have a lovely day. You too. And uh, keep on being cool. And we will uh, we'll talk soon. We will. Thank you so much for having me. And that was my conversation with Yota. I hope you enjoyed that. I always enjoy uh, chatting with her. It's a lot of fun. And now I have to go and uh, do some research on Fabo Yantum or whatever the, <laughs> the fuck that thing was called. Anyways, thanks for listening to the show. Tune in next time to Beyond Synth, the best synthwave chat show there is. And uh, stay tuned because we're going to be rounding the year out with a ton of music that I want you all to listen to. And it will be fun to hear from uh, you, the the listeners and uh, Patreon supporters of Beyond Synth and PayPal's for that matter. If you guys are listening, don't forget, beyondsynth at gmail.com. You've got about a week 
a week and a half to send me an email if you want to take part in a quick listener chat that'll be on the show. And that is all I have to say. So you have a lovely day. Keep being cool. And tune in next time to Beyond Synth. It's the best synthwave chat show there is. Beyond Synth Radio is produced by Andy Last. Check the show notes for more information on the musicians featured on the show. Beyond Synth is made possible by listeners like you. Consider supporting Beyond Synth at patreon.com slash beyondsynth. Thanks for listening.